What's good? My name is Jesse Andrews, and today I will be covering the 802.3 Ethernet history. Let's try number two, so let's see how it goes. Once upon a time, in 1973, Robert Metcalf was working with the U.S. military, training them on the first packet switching network, what was then referred to as the ARPANET, the Advanced Research Project Agency Network. At the time, Internet in its entirety was almost entirely almost fully used in the military. It was That was what the internet was founded for. It was sending military information. So Metcalf was working with them with that. Robert Metcalf was a Harvard graduate with a PhD in computer science, a master of science in applied mathematics, as well as having a degree in electrical engineering and industrial management from MIT. Both of those schools are extremely prestigious and it is very impressive that he was able to get through both of them with two things in each. So Robert Metcalf was a very bright individual. While he's visiting Washington, D.C., as he often did for his work, because it was in the military, D.C. is the base for that, Metcalf was informed what was then called the Aloha system, which was another form of computer communications. While he didn't like every aspect of it, he was inspired by the concept and went home, did his own work, and on May 22, 1973, he constructed what became the Ethernet. Working with David Boggs and others to make this concept a reality, by 1975, a couple of years later, Xerox had patented the Ethernet and started as a system that is still used today. I think it's funny that Xerox only makes copiers now. Anyways, what exactly is the 802.3 Ethernet, the numbers, what do those mean? TechTarget defines it as a standard specification for Ethernet, a method of physical communication in a local area network of LAN, which is maintained by the Institute of Electric, Electrical and Electronics Engineers, the IEEE. So, Ethernet is just a physical cable you plug into your computer like I have plugged into mine right now and what I'll be using to upload this video and it is able to connect you to a network and get you internet access without wireless technology being needed. Now for the history part. <laughs> Obviously there were a lot of updates and as you can see I could hardly fit the entire list of them into one screenshot and I don't think I could manage to fit all of it into a 10 to 13 minute PowerPoint presentation as 10 to 13 minutes doesn't equal 10 to 13 days. So what I'm going to do is a TLDR, too long didn't read, of the history of the Ethernet standard. So many standards and updates to the 802.3 Ethernet. Let's just cover the updates that actually made a difference. Let's get the important things. Try not to leave anything major out. I'm not sure if I did. I'm pretty sure I got them all, though. So as I said before, in the 70s, 1973, Experimental Ethernet was formed by Metcalf and sent information at a strong 2.94 megabits per second, which is a decent bit below a megabyte per second, so by today's standards that is painfully slow. But at the time, it was much better and gave, gave us hope into what we could improve from there. So mark your calendar. On June 23rd, which was my mom's birthday, shoutouts, 1983, the IEEE 802.3 standard was brought into the world. This featured 10 megabit per second, 1.25 megabytes per second speed. Now, notice as I go on, the 10 megabit, megabit per second and 1.25 decimal place and the 1.25 will move over to the right each time, and we'll add another zero as it's sort of exponential with how the speeds increase. <clears throat> on December 12th, 1985, the 802.3a was released, the first update. With the addition of 10 megabit, like I said, it goes up one. Uh, oh, just kidding. Anyways, with 10 megabyte per second repeater, as I pictured above, which extended the range of the Ethernet connection, <clears throat> and so on. That picture above is not the one that was used at the time, but the idea is pretty much the same. It's a nice little magic box. December 10th, 1987, a couple years later, 802.3d, a couple updates later, brought in Fiber Optic Enter Repeater Link, the 4 IRL, which performed what the 802.3a did, but better, stronger, faster. It was just an overall improvement. Onwards to the 90s, September 28, 1990, 802.3i came around with the 10 base T mega, 10 megabit per second over a twisted pair, which means it had an RJ45 connector, which you see pictured on the right, and it's used very often in the future. It's used in my Ethernet cord right now. It's used on every Ethernet cord in the world, I think. And it's a very nice little end to the cables and keeps them all tied together well. June 14th, 1995, the 802.3U puts us towards the bottom of the alphabet, as well as having 100 megabit. There's the increments now it's talking about, 12.5 megabytes per second speed. Much faster internet, great improvement at the time. But it was still pretty slow by today's standards. 
March 20th, 1997, which is before I was born, actually. Funny. April 7th is when I was born. The 802.3x incorporates full duplex, meaning information can be sent in two directions at the same time. Just like the little diagram below, it's going both ways, and they both work, which had not been done before in terms of Ethernet. June 25th, 1998, the 802.3z puts us at the end of the alphabet with increasing max speed to a gigabit per second or 1,000 megabits per second, 125 megabytes per second. So everything increased, it gets faster, it gets stronger. As you can see with all internet, it just keeps getting better over time, which is really exciting to see what's going to happen in the future. So we get into this century, 2000s. March 30th, 2000, the 802.3ab gives us link aggregation, combining multiple network connections to provide better output. This was the first time link aggregation was really used and was very big at the time, and is still used today. And June 13th, 2002, the 802.3ae multiplies the speed by another 10 at a strong 10 gigabit per second over fiber internet, which you see fiber internet is still used today as well. It's actually getting massively popular with Google Fiber and so on. April 6, 2005, day before my birthday, the 802.3-2005 incorporated a few previous updates like the AE, AF, AG, etc. And home Ethernet becomes a lot more accessible and becomes a little bit more popular. A couple years later, March 22, 2007, the backplane Ethernet allows Ethernet to be connected to the main circuit board of computers. As you can see down here, there's a little plug-in for Ethernet cables. That's what's well, plugged into my motherboard right now, and I'm pretty sure every motherboard around the world that has Ethernet connection, which is most desktop computers. History is still being written, and this is what I think is really cool. On June 17, 2010, the 802.3BA, as we loop through the alphabet again, like I said, there was a lot of updates, and it would take so long to go over all of them. <clears throat> There is another speed increase up to 40 gigabits per second and 100 gigabits per second, keeping that multiples of 10 going. And that's pretty fast. That's where about where we're at now. Um, there hasn't been a major speed update since then, I don't believe. Or I didn't see one. And then December 28th, 2012, the mind calendar didn't end the world. And I think we're all happy about that one. Got a pretty awful movie out of it. And a revision, more important thing, a revision of the 802.3 standard is put in place. Lots of small amendments. It's a lot of things, past updates that weren't really official that became, and everything, like I said earlier, it just gets stronger, it gets faster, it gets better, as overall Ethernet just improves. And going onwards into the future of this year, the in September of this year, it's expected 802.3 BZ and 25 gigabit per second Ethernet is expected to gain another speed increase and soon we'll be living in the future. I think this is what Google Fiber is looking for. This is what, it's just, it's so incredible to see how the internet just keeps getting faster and it keeps getting better. And I'm really excited to see, maybe one day I'll be able to upload this video in five seconds as opposed to the probably five hours it's going to take because NKU college internet that everyone uses at the same time is not as blazing fast as it will be in the future. One day we'll get there. Works cited. <clears throat> I used I used the uh, IEEE IE org. It was super useful. Um, had the timeline I was looking for, which helped me structure the last three slides, it, or the last four slides, I guess. Um, had a good history, had great descriptions over everything. Very useful website. Obviously, I had a Bob Metcalf, his history. He, was, he really was a genius of his time. He revolutionized the internet. He made it pretty, he basically formatted what it ended up turning out into today. Of course, I used our textbook to get some definitions in there, and that is about it. So it looks like I am 50 seconds under the time limit. That is a modern day tragedy. I recorded this like, or I tested it like three times, and I definitely went over 10 minutes each time, but I guess I talked faster because I was nervous and trying not to mess up. So as unfortunate as that is, that is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I was able to cover the history of the 802.3 Ethernet as well as I could, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks.